Howdy folks, in this Automation Anywhere technical tutorial, we're going to walk through a scenario and show how it can be automated with the Automation Anywhere RPA software. So let's, let's set ourselves up a little story. Imagine I just bought some blue widgets and I received some of them and they were broken and I want to write a support letter or maybe I don't know how to use these blue widgets. I want to write a support letter to the support group and have a support group handle it. So imagine I'm an end user on the internet. I might, for example, compose an email. So I open up my email, I say it's going to go to the inbox at the support organization, and I'm going to say problem with blue widgets, widgets. And then I might say, how do I use my blue widgets? And I hit the send button, and an email is then sent to the inbox at the Blue Widget Corporation. Now let's imagine I am a support rep at Blue Widgets. So I might go to my support inbox, I might retrieve the emails, I might find that I've received a new email from an end user, I read that email and now I need to hand this over to my support organization so that they can answer it. Now at Blue Widgets we have a ticketing system. It's a very simple ticketing system, looks like this. This is being cobbled up as a test. So in my ticketing system, I might enter the person's name, and I might enter their email address, for example, oh, can't type here, let's try that again. I might enter their email address, and I'm copying this straight off of the email that was arrived. So this is classic swivel chair technology. And I might copy this. We got pro they say they're telling us they've got problems with their widgets. So we'll copy and paste this. So there's no automated integration between the email system and the reporting system. So I now create a new ticket. I'm going to copy the ticket number. I copy this. I submit my ticket. The ticket was completed. Now remember, I'm not an end user. I am somebody in our support organization. I just created a ticket for our technologists to have a look at. And then I might respond to the original customer and say, we have created a ticket, such and such and such. I just pasted that in, looks funny. I guess it was a, a, an email column. Hit the send button. And that was the end of the interaction. So let's, re let's, let's remember what we did here in the last couple of minutes. An end user sent an email to the Blue Widgets Corporation saying it was broke. Somebody at the Blue Widgets Corporation, who has responsibility for looking at emails, examined the email, saw that it was a support request, brought up a browser page, went to the ticket logging system, entered the ticket details, and hit the submit button. And that's what they did manually. Now, how long did that take me? It took me 30 seconds, 60 seconds, a minute or two. Uh, that's not too bad, but imagine there were dozens or hundreds of tickets per hour. That's not something which is uh, sustainable. Also, as a Blue Widget employee, I, you know, time is money. All the time that I'm spending cross-pasting these tickets from the emails into the ticket logging system, that's time that I could be using for other things. So, this is where Automation Anywhere comes into the story. So let me pause a moment and let's set up an Automation Anywhere uh, solution. Let's show it running and then we'll go through what it takes to build it. All right, so we'll jump straight in. Oop. We'll jump straight in to what is going on in Automation Anywhere. And uh, what I've created is a concept called a task. And a task is the recipe, the instructions, the commands, the statements, however you want to phrase those that will be executed to automate my workflow. Now, what you see in front of you is an example of a script. This is the task action list that's going to be executed to process emails. Let's run this and then we'll go through the logic and the, and the methodology I use to create it, but let's see what it looks like in action. So I hit the run button and I've got debug mode on, so we will see things uh, uh, run for a bit. So we're running the, uh, the, the, the script, and what it's doing is it's 
getting my emails and it's running my browser. And at the end of that, which took about, what, 10 seconds to run, that retrieved the email, opened up the browser for my ticketing system, copied the relevant information from the email into the browser of my ticketing system, sent a response email back to the original customer, and uh, that was the end of the story. So as a in, as an end user at the customer, rather as an end user, I should now find that I have an email in my in in my uh, uh, in my inbox, and we do have an email, and it was support ticket created, etc., etc. Demonstrated that it actually ran. So now let's go through automation anywhere, and without going into too much details, look about look at what was going on here. So what we have is a script, a recipe that Automation Anywhere will follow uh, blindly from beginning to end. Think of it like a computer program. And this program is executing the statements which are going to automate the execution of the human task that I performed. Now we can click on any of these activities and double click it and we're brought up into the details of that activity. Now the activities are entered into the script by selecting them from the palette of activities here and we have many, many activities to choose from. The ones we're focusing on are, are web interaction ones. So we've got an activity here called Open Browser and this first activity opens a browser. So when run, a browser will be opened with a blank screen on it and we're ready to do work. Next activity is a looping activity where what we're doing is we're looping over all the email messages that have been received in my inbox at my organization. So I specify my SMTP email server, the user ID, and what we get back is a list of emails where we then loop through each of the emails in turn processing the content of the email. The next activity is we navigate the browser that we opened earlier, we navigate to a URL. Well, if I copy that URL, if I copy it into my clipboard and we go there manually, let's see what is at the end of that URL. Let me just open up a browser, here we go. Let me go to that URL and what we have is the ticket logging system. So this statement, this command in our Automation Anywhere tasks opens up an instance of the web page for the automation. Now we're starting to parse the content of the email. And what I want to do is I want to get the email response address uh, from the email string. So I'll use a bit of regular expression here to get the email response from the, uh, uh, from the email. I want to figure out uh, who it's from, um, what the person's name is, and then we get into some interesting things. Now what I'm doing in this activity is extracting from the web page on the ticketing system the ticket number that was created. So let's again look at the web page. So this is a web page. Every time I go to this web page here, notice I get a new ticket number. Now, this activity in the Automation Anywhere looks inside the web page and extracts the ticket number that was generated for us. So now we know our own ticket number inside this environment. Of course, this was scraped or retrieved from the pre-existing web page that I had previously manually used. So we took from this web page the generated ticket number. The next things we do in our uh, Automation Anywhere script is we copy in fields that were received in the email into fields in this browser-based form. So I copy in the email address, I copy in the person's name, I copy in the subject, and I copy in the details of the email. Finally, I execute a submit command, again from Automation Anywhere, driving the submit button of the uh, pre-existing browser. And at that point, we have now translated the received email 
into the execution of a pre-existing web-based application here uh, that is browser-based. Uh, finally, the last thing we do in this uh, example is we send a response email back to the recipient. So we send it back to the person who originated the email and then we loop around again processing any further requests or any further emails in the story. And finally, we close the browser because that's uh, just us being hygienic and cleaning up. So I've not gone into great detail on these individual statements, but hopefully I've given you a flavor of what it looks like to build or think about an Automation Anywhere example. We would look at the tasks performed by a human being. We would translate those into steps to be, for, be performed by the uh, Automation Anywhere runtime built up from these lower level tasks. Uh, steps or commands and then we assemble these we got debuggers we got uh, all kinds of good things and when we run it let's run it again just to see it run once more when we run it it's now executing these steps one after one after another it opens the browser it copies in the fields uh, it hits the submit button and it sends an email response and then closes the browser and that's pretty straightforward. Obviously, Automation Anywhere executing that task is going to be faster than me trying to move my fingers over a keyboard and move the mouse and other things. And uh, it's obviously uh, repeatable and uh, uh, consistent. So again, just a sample Automation Anywhere example that uh, might be of value to you. Looking forward to more of these videos in the future, folks. Bye for now.